on our toes. This is in southern Gaza and they tested us all right, but they were taken out working with uh, other Gdudim battalions as well uh, and Maglan elite unit. And so they were taken down and, and on Thursday, four more in the middle of the night. And I'm talking, it's, so, it's more intense than usual because suddenly a helicopter will fly right over your head and pick up wounded soldiers, take them to the hospital. Suddenly you'll have explosions. Uh, just, just, it's just been more intense than normal. I usually have been doing like a few days in and then out to the base a few days. In. But this has just been, I mean, you're sleeping with your equipment on you, all your bullets, your shoes on, your, I took my helmet off, but you, you're like that in an abandoned building. Yeah, and it's just been intense. So the last week, uh, there is a tunnel that is that we suspected to be going to be used as like a, a secondary October seventh uh, to attack from a tunnel uh, that suspected. We already found it. We prayed and prayed. Uh, I was praying there with my hands in the air. On the seventh drill bit that went down, uh, we found it. We found this tunnel that we were looking for, and uh, we have to find out where it's going, got to deal with it, all while we're under uh, fire, all while we're in a dangerous uh, time. So that is, we got to destroy, it's called, uh, it's, I'm not going to go into more details about what it is, but it's it's a, uh, a scary tunnel. And uh, you've seen some of us, some of the tunnels we've dealt with already, and this is what we think they've been planning for a long time to do a secondary, you know, attack on us before the war's over. So we're going to make sure they don't do that. Um, so this last week, uh, I'll do that, and then then I'll finish that, and then I will be handing my gun in. Unless, of course, Lebanon erupts, uh, but I'll be on standby, of course, everything ready for me to just go back. Uh, you heard the big explosion yesterday from, um, and there was a false alarm of, of aircraft coming in or drones flying in, and big booms were heard here in Galilee. Uh, and as I just got out, and we're like, what is going on? You know, I think there will be a war with Lebanon. It just may be not for a year or half a year. I don't know, but uh, let's see what let's see what happens. Now, at the same time as all this intensity is going on, uh, I don't know if you've if you've read in the book of Nehemiah. I, I like to see myself as a Nehemiah, a helper of Aliyah. And in this special time, as as this fast is being called, where you know Esther, she asked non-Jewish people to fast. She asked the Persians to fast with her when she was going against Hamas. I mean, Haman sounds almost like the same thing. And so she was, she had to uh, go against the Prince of Persia, Daniel chapter 10, go against the Prince of Persia and the Prince of Greece. And so she brought the Jews and the non-Jews together to fast. And, and I just think of Daniel, he lays it out, the vision of there's a Prince of Persia and there's a Prince of Greece. Those are the two things we're dealing with, even the whole trans, thing and the whole, you know, LGBT, all this has to do with the Prince of Greece, Prince of Persia, that's of course Hezbollah and the Houthis and uh, Hamas and Izzaldin al-Qassam and the al-Qassam brigades and so on and Islamic Jihad and so on. That's the Prince of Persia. So I just think that when we're going against this, they, they felt the way to win it was through fasting. Uh, full, full disclosure, I'm just not eating meat, but other people around the world have writ wrote me that they're fasting no food at all, some no food, no water, some uh, all kinds of stuff. And it's it's intriguing because it, it's usually just Tanit Esther and all that is usually just a Jewish thing, not done by anyone else in any church that I've ever heard of ever doing an actual with Israel. Uh, and so I think that's really, really a cool moment. 